What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Prince's World. And today, the new project is a 2002 Ford Mustang. Now, there's not much wrong with this vehicle. Only thing we need are tires. Okay, I lied. There is one thing that is wrong. We have the case of a dirty thief. That's right, some goon thought it'd be a good idea to come and steal my radio. Cut up some wires and also destroy all that was once beautiful. But that's not a real problem. I suck it up. You know, I'm getting tired of all this sucking up. But anyway, the interior is good for the most part. All it needs is a good clean. I remember, because I replaced this. But you know, this can be fixed. It will get fixed, actually. But for now, Back to the task at hand. I already went about jacking up the vehicle, removing the tires and <laughs> overriding some security. Yes. So now we have the tires packed up in the F-150. This boy that gave me so much problems is now the boy that's alleviating all my stress right now. The only thing that's left is this one stubborn, shubby gun that refuses to come off. The problem being, this lug stud is now a spinner. I can't spin with my hands, but if I put a socket on there, that bow will move. Yeah, this, you see all the rust. When I was turning, snap, and that boy decided to come undone. But anyway, that does not stop the workflow. We are still going. We're about to be on the road. Let's get going. Wow. Ain't this ugly. I got my hopes up on ugly. Four different tires. Just look at that. That is so ugly. Oh boy. It's whatever then. Okay, so I know I said we'll be working on that Mustang, but unfortunately that won't be happening. Apparently when I went to go get those donor tires, I didn't look at them really good. So when I took them off the vehicle, I found they were bad. So bad that the thread inside the tires were coming out. So, I just let it be. Yeah, that means the Mustang's also going to be sitting up for some time. Here's not a problem. I want to tell you guys something, and that is, I like fish. And the reason I like fish so much is because there's always more in the sea. That's right, everybody. We got ourselves a 2009 Jeep Patriot. And this boy, it runs, it drives. The only problem is, after some time a little vehicle heats up, the front wheels lock up. So we're gonna find out what's going on. What we're gonna be doing is putting up our handy dandy scan tool and seeing what's up. <laughs> I remember buying this thing at about the bullet was so expensive, but yet super effective. Yeah, but anyway, here we are. So here we go, about to plug this boy up right there. Look at that, Bosh. So you can see here are all our codes. Jesus Christ. 15 codes. Powertrain control module P1607. P2004. Yeah. All these codes. But you know whatever. What we're gonna look at now is the freeze frame. Let's see what we get. We got a P0777. Well, this could be the main problem right here. But we're not gonna let it just throw all our, all our money on it, so let's keep on diagnosing and see what we get. Now the thing about a P0777, I already know what that is. It's a pressure control module, and that's in the transmission. So you know, whatever's causing the vehicle to lock up like that is in the transmission. So what we got to do is find out why that thing is wrong. It could be the module's bad itself or some other things. 
I thought about a little research that I did. I found out that it could be a bad filter, bad fluid. Now, top fixes are usually bad filter, bad fluid. And so let's see if that could be the case. Now, the thing about checking the fluid could be quite difficult because I look around, there's no transmission dipstick. All we have is just this. And let me tell you, when I pull it out, there is literally no dipstick at all. But lucky for your boy is that I'm resourceful. I always come handy. So let's see. Okay, now I'll say yuck. This tranny has seen much better days. I mean like yuck. This thing is literally over 100,000 miles and not a single day has this thing had its transmission fluid changed. And I mean like, what the hell? So we found a possibility, is what I'm saying. We're not gonna put a lot of money on it, but we're gonna see if we found a possibility. So, what we're gonna do is pull the thing over to the lift and drop the pan. See what else we get. Disgusting. So as you guys can see, I got the Jeep on the lift. And what I'm gonna be doing is draining the transmission fluid straight from the dipstick. Because for some of you guys that know, replacing tranny fluid can be quite messy. And I'm not for all that dirty, dirty. I like to stay clean as much as possible. So, you know, I'm going to hop right to it and let you guys witness as I at least hopefully make this successful. Because it's the first time I've actually pulled transmission straight from the dipstick. And we'll see, like, how it goes. So you know that failed. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'd have to try hard not to get dirty. All right, so here we are after everything. I found myself in a situation where I gotta remove this under thing right here to get to the transmission. Not a problem, just a few bolts. And would you look at that, a hundred thousand miles and not a single change. Look at that. All oh, nothing but darkness. Black and murk. Look at those magnets. Nothing but crap. I wonder there's sludge in there. And now I know I don't have to buy a new gasket. The one on there is still good. I'm just put some RTV along the seams right here and place it back up. Clean up the mag mag magnets and put on some new oil. I'll catch you guys at the parts store. Here we are at the parts store. Who you talking to your dad? Now this is YouTube. Say hello to the camera. Oh, no, 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 no. Hell. Yes. What's going on these days? Why do you want to put people on the camera? Jack! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The world to see, you know that, right? No, don't do that. Give me that. Man, give me You're about to be famous. You're about to be famous. What are you doing there? Cut I'm showing the world the Patriot. I'm showing them that too. Give me my money. Okay. So I put everything back together. Everything's buttoned up. Pan back on. Filter in. Buttoned up. I'm about to put some good stuff in there. I even got this long thing to make sure I put it the right amount. You're asking when I got it, the paper said Jeep Patriot, so don't get on me. The thing doesn't come with a filter with a dipstick, just this. Let's go. Let's 
good too, I guess. So, what I did there was put four quarts in. I put all the stuff that needed to be put back underneath, like that little shield cover and all that stuff, and dropped the vehicle. So now I already put like, I already said that, but anyway, what we're gonna do now is let the vehicle run on idle until it reaches proper temperatures, and then add more as it goes on. So, let's get it. So you know we're back at the auto store. Didn't have enough training fluid, so you know. Gotta come back here and get some more. The thing that really messes me up on this train for it. It's not red, it's like a urine color. Anyway, let's get this stuff. This hyper expensive full synthetic crap. Yeah, but it works. Had to come in and give a shout out to the crew. Help me your brother out on these hard endeavors. Say hello, this is on YouTube. What's up, YouTube? I heard that. He wanted to get it a good close up with the girly. Get the fuck out of me! <laughs> oh man, is it for you? Yeah, I didn't have enough training for it. You did? Nope. Had to get that CVT stuff. And look at that. Straight urine. I prefer the rosy red of blood transmission, not urine transmission, but whatever. Jeep wants to be. Unique. The vehicle suck though. Now let me talk to you guys about a man's love. A man's love can last forever. As long as the thing that he loves treats him right forever. Now I don't talk about the occasional breakdowns and the occasional fixes. Of course, that's gonna happen when dealing with a vehicle. That's the case with this Lexus. It's a good vehicle, because you know why? It's made by a Toyota. But when you do with a company like Chrysler, who spends their days making nothing but crap, you just have no love for anything. Let me talk to you guys about that Jeep Patriot. That was a vehicle that I loved, a vehicle that I could have hope for. But guess what? I have no love for it now, because it's nothing but a piece of crap. So let me tell you something. After I did that automatic fluid change, I took it for a test drive. You know what that boy decided to do? That boy decided to leave me stranded in the bad part of town at nighttime. Okay, now let me tell you this. It was my fault for driving this vehicle at night. I was told the symptom. I didn't really do much about it until I changed fluid. I took the thing down the road on a test drive, and guess what? I heard a little noise. I said, let that play out, because it's been sitting up for a while. I took it up and down, everything was running good, just that noise was there. It was actually going down, too, so I thought, let's keep on going. Everything's going good, until that boy comes to a screeching, horrid stop. I'm scared for my life, too, because I had no idea where that came from. So, I realized I couldn't move the vehicle forward. It was stuck in, in whatever gear it was, but in a halted position. That boy was not moving at all. I'm sitting there praying to God and calling up friends and family so I don't get killed in the bad part of town. I didn't know what was going to happen. I'm scared out of my wits. But that's not the bad part. I managed to get that boy back here by driving in reverse. So you know, me looking like a complete idiot driving in reverse in a neighborhood. I didn't get pulled over, luckily. I got it back here, I put it back here in this spot and left it be. So now I know the transmission is just straight up garbage. So what I'm gonna have to do now is start searching the internet far and wide for transmissions. And guess what, I already have and I failed. Because the most people will take for this thing is a thousand. The least people will take for this thing is, let's say, 900. 
and I'm not looking to spend that much on a transmission, depending on how long this vehicle is going to stay on this lot. Forgive me, my arm is getting tired and I'm just video with one arm, but... After all my researching, I did find out that this transmission also can be found on a Dodge Caliber. But that doesn't make it any easier. Guess what? People know that these, that these vehicles share the same transmission with the Dodge Caliber. They're going to hike up the price. Ugh. And on top of that, Chrysler's dumb self wants to go off and make multiple trim levels for this. So now they have a transmission for the 2.0 liter, the 2.4 liter, the 2.4 liter four wheel drive. <laughs> so you know, I'm having a hard time finding a transmission to fit this thing. Every time I find one, I find out it's for the 2.0 liter. So I'm like, oh Jesus Christ. That's pretty much another scam for these big companies for you to go have you run to the dealership saying, hey dealership. Take my money, because I couldn't find a transmission for this heap of crap. Jeep. Jeep. They put that name on any vehicle that they want to, and you're going to buy it. Because, you know, Jeep has a good name. So now I'm here looking for transmissions up and down, asking about on the internet, going to places that are not even in my state. Just to find a transmission, just to find out that it doesn't fit. And then the people will tell me that it does. Yeah. So you know, that's my story. That's my struggle. That's my heartache. Does that mean I give up? No! I keep on hauling. I keep on trucking, because that's what? My blood is red. <sighs> So you know, that's what happened. This vehicle's gonna have to sit up for a while. So we're back on that Mustang. That broken lug that has me flabbergasted is still keeping the vehicle in the bad position. Yeah, progress. Anyway, we're gonna, what I'm gonna have to do is find out ways to get that lug off so I can replace the tires and set that thing low. I guarantee you. With all that I've shown you guys, that vehicle is going to be an adventure. Hopefully. But that's enough talk for now. I'll see you guys back on the Mustang. So guys, it's the next day. Like I said, we're back on the Mustang. I'm not going to happy about this one, despite that stupid, stupid lug. Want to know why? Because I finally found a way to get it off. I'm gonna show you guys right now. You see right there, I put some JB Weld steel stick on that boy to try to hold it in place. From what I've seen, for the most part, it looks like it did its job because this time when I'm shaking the wheel, it doesn't uh, knock the lug out, but it's actually moves the whole rotor. So, you know, there's that plus. So now we're going to have to see if that does the trick for us in helping us get that boy off. Here's my fingers crossed hoping that it does because, you know, if it doesn't work, I still have another way I could go about it. Well, let's see. And just like that, freaking called it, it came apart. Eh, I'm not worried. I'll get off another way. And just like I said, that's my another way. Tell you the truth, I should have done this in the first place because you know, it would have been the most sensical. It's just that I'm working with a tight space. I want to exhaust all my resources before I went for the most dangerous, which it really is. Anyway, let's hop to it. A few moments later. <sighs> well, that didn't work. Welding cannot work. But anyway, we move on. I'll just take this thing to a car shop where they can do all they can. I've done my best. I tried. So we're going to move on to other things. We're still on the Mustang, yes. What we're going to do is make sure this thing runs. 
and we haven't tried that yet so we're about to find out as you guys will see now I already got a better in here now I don't want to hear what any of you guys in the comment section who has a Mustang of this year and body saying oh you got the wrong battery hey I don't care it's the only battery I had I put it in there it's gonna start the vehicle whether you like it or not and it's gonna drive the vehicle take it as it is also I got the fluids all topped up oh wow yeah it's all topped up <laughs> They got some old orange cool up in the reservoir, but hey, it's gonna run it. Trust me, it will. The cool pack looks good and dandy. I hope there's no misfires, but anyway. Oh yeah, also, don't let me forget this. Need something there right there, but we're not driving anywhere. And all the other fluids, seems good. Other than that, let's get this boy started. Here goes nothing. <laughs> but look at that. That engine's burning. So I got this from the guy he said has been sitting there for a while. Well, I know about Ford. One thing I can trust are these Mustangs of this year model, the new end. These are actually good engines as long as they're transmission. They'll sit for a long time but they'll last forever. This is one of these high mileage vehicles too. But you know this thing is still burning good after a high mileage and long time of sitting up. In some ways, it's kind of built like the NF-150, where this EGR is like right here. I'll connect straight to the... Yeah, I can't say right now, but... <laughs> anyway, it's good. But we're not done with that thing so far. We still have to get the radio fixed up. And also, what else, what else, what else? Oh yeah, get that freaking rim off! That stinking lug has got me messed up, literally! Anyway, we got this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Until then, Prince out.